Part six, chapter one of Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Translated by Constance Garnett. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part six, chapter one. A strange period began for Raskolnikov. It was as though a fog had fallen upon him and wrapped him in a dreary solitude from which there was no escape recalling that period long after he believed that his mind had been clouded at times and that it had continued so with intervals till the final catastrophe he was convinced that he had been mistaken about many things at that time for instance as to the date of certain events anyway when he tried later on to piece his recollections together he learnt a great deal about himself from what other people told him he had mixed up incidents and had explained events as due to circumstances which existed only in his imagination at times he was a prey to agonies of morbid uneasiness amounting sometimes to panic but he remembered too moments hours perhaps whole days of complete apathy which came upon him as a reaction from his previous terror and might be compared with the abnormal insensibility sometimes seen in the dying he seemed to be trying in that latter stage to escape from a full and clear understanding of his position certain essential facts which required immediate consideration were particularly irksome to him how glad he would have been to be free from some cares the neglect of which would have threatened him with complete inevitable ruin he was particularly worried about svidrigailov he might be said to be permanently thinking of svidrigailov from the time of Svidrigailov's two menacing and unmistakable words in Sonya's room at the moment of Katerina Ivanovna's death, the normal working of his mind seemed to break down. But although this new fact caused him extreme uneasiness, Raskolnikov was in no hurry for an explanation of it. At times, finding himself in a solitary and remote part of the town, in some wretched eating-house, sitting alone lost in thought, hardly knowing how he had come there, he suddenly thought of Svidrigailov. He recognized suddenly, clearly, and with dismay that he ought at once to come to an understanding with that man and to make what terms he could. Walking outside the city gates one day, he positively fancied that they had fixed a meeting there, that he was waiting for Svidrigailov. Another time, he woke up before daybreak lying on the ground under some bushes and could not at first understand how he had come there but during the two or three days after katerina ivanovna's death he had two or three times met svidrigailov at sonya's lodging where he had gone aimlessly for a moment they exchanged a few words and made no reference to the vital subject as though they were tacitly agreed not to speak of it for a time katerina ivanovna's body was still lying in the coffin svidrigailov was busy making arrangements for the funeral sonya too was very busy at their last meeting, Svidrigailov informed Raskolnikov that he had made an arrangement, and a very satisfactory one, for Katerina Ivanovna's children, that he had through certain connections succeeded in getting hold of certain personages, by whose help the three orphans could be at once placed in very suitable institutions, that the money he had settled on them had been of great assistance, as it is much easier to place orphans with some property than destitute ones he said something too about sonya and promised to come himself in a day or two to see raskolnikov mentioning that he would like to consult with him that there were things they must talk over this conversation took place in the passage on the stairs svidrigailov looked intently at raskolnikov and suddenly after a brief pause dropping his voice asked but how is it rodion romanovitch you don't seem yourself you look and you listen but you don't seem to understand cheer up we'll talk things over i am only sorry i've so much to do of my own business and other people's ah rodion romanovitch he added suddenly what all men need is fresh air fresh air more than anything he moved to one side to make way for the priest and server who were coming up the stairs they had come for the requiem service by Svidrigailov's orders, it was sung twice a day punctually. Svidrigailov went his way. Raskolnikov stood still a moment, thought, and followed the priest into Sonya's room. He stood at the door. They began quietly, slowly and mournfully singing the service. 
from his childhood the thought of death and the presence of death had something oppressive and mysteriously awful and it was long since he had heard the requiem service and there was something else here as well too awful and disturbing he looked at the children they were all kneeling by the coffin polenka was weeping behind them sonya prayed softly and as it were timidly weeping these last two days she hasn't said a word to me she hasn't glanced at me raskolnikov thought suddenly the sunlight was bright in the room the incense rose in clouds the priest read give rest o lord raskolnikov stayed all through the service as he blessed them and took his leave the priest looked round strangely after the service raskolnikov went up to sonya she took both his hands and let her head sink on his shoulder this slight friendly gesture bewildered raskolnikov it seemed strange to him that there was no trace of repugnance no trace of disgust no tremor in her hand it was the furthest limit of self-abnegation at least so he interpreted it sonya said nothing raskolnikov pressed her hand and went out he felt very miserable if it had been possible to escape to some solitude he would have thought himself lucky even if he had to spend his whole life there but although he had almost always been by himself of late he had never been able to feel alone sometimes he walked out of the town on to the high road once he had even reached a little wood but the lonelier the place was the more he seemed to be aware of an uneasy presence near him it did not frighten him but greatly annoyed him so that he made haste to return to the town to mingle with the crowd to enter restaurants and taverns to walk in busy thoroughfares there he felt easier and even more solitary one day at dusk he sat for an hour listening to songs in a tavern and he remembered that he positively enjoyed it but at last he had suddenly felt the same uneasiness again as though his conscience smote him here i sit listening to singing is that what i ought to be doing he thought yet he felt at once that that was not the only cause of his uneasiness there was something requiring immediate decision but it was something he could not clearly understand or put into words it was a hopeless tangle no better the struggle again better porfiry again or svidrigailov better some challenge again some attack yes yes he thought he went out of the tavern and rushed away almost at a run the thought of dunya and his mother suddenly reduced him almost to a panic that night he woke up before morning among some bushes in krestovsky island trembling all over with fever he walked home and it was early morning when he arrived after some hours sleep the fever left him but he woke up late two o'clock in the afternoon he remembered that katerina ivanovna's funeral had been fixed for that day and was glad that he was not present at it nastasya brought him some food he ate and drank with appetite almost with greediness his head was fresher and he was calmer than he had been for the last three days he even felt a passing wonder at his previous attacks of panic the door opened and razumihin came in ah he's eating then he's not ill said razumihin he took a chair and sat down at the table opposite raskolnikov he was troubled and did not attempt to conceal it he spoke with evident annoyance but without hurry or raising his voice he looked as though he had some special fixed determination listen he began resolutely as far as i am concerned you may all go to hell but from what i see it's clear to me that i can't make head or tail of it please don't think i've come to ask you questions i don't want to know hang it if you begin telling me your secrets i dare say i shouldn't stay to listen i should go away cursing i have only come to find out once for all whether it's a fact that you are mad there is a conviction in the air that you are mad or very nearly so i admit i've been disposed to that opinion myself judging from your stupid repulsive and quite inexplicable actions and from your recent behaviour to your mother and sister only a monster or a madman could treat them as you have so you must be mad when did you see them last just now haven't you seen them since then what have you been doing with yourself tell me please i've been to you three times already your mother has been seriously ill since yesterday she had made up her mind to come to you avdotya romanovna tried to prevent her she wouldn't hear a word if he is ill if his mind is giving way who can look after him like his mother she said we all came here together we couldn't let her come alone all the way we kept begging her to be calm 
we came in you weren't here she sat down and stayed ten minutes while we stood waiting in silence she got up and said if he's gone out that is if he is well and has forgotten his mother it's humiliating and unseemly for his mother to stand at his door begging for kindness she returned home and took to her bed now she is in a fever i see she said that he has time for his girl she means by your girl sophia semyonovna your betrothed or your mistress i don't know i went at once to sophia semyonovna's for i wanted to know what was going on i looked round i saw the coffin the children crying and sophia semyonovna trying them on mourning dresses no sign of you i apologized came away and reported to avdotya romanovna so that's all nonsense and you haven't got a girl the most likely thing is that you are mad but here you sit guzzling boiled beef as though you'd not had a bite for three days though as far as that goes madmen eat too but though you have not said a word to me yet you are not mad that i'd swear above all you are not mad so you may go to hell all of you for there's some mystery some secret about it and i don't intend to worry my brains over your secrets so i've simply come to swear at you he finished getting up to relieve my mind and i know what to do now what do you mean to do now what business is it of yours what i mean to do you are going in for a drinking bout how how did you know why it's pretty plain razumihin paused for a minute you always have been a very rational person and you've never been mad never he observed suddenly with warmth you're right i shall drink good-bye and he moved to go out i was talking with my sister the day before yesterday i think it was about you razumihin about me but where can you have seen her the day before yesterday razumihin stopped short and even turned a little pale one could see that his heart was throbbing slowly and violently she came here by herself sat there and talked to me she did yes what did you say to her i mean uh, about me i told her you were a very good honest and industrious man i didn't tell her you love her because she knows that herself she knows that herself well it's pretty plain wherever i might go whatever happened to me you would remain to look after them i so to speak give them into your keeping razumihin i say this because i know quite well how you love her and am convinced of the purity of your heart i know that she too may love you and perhaps does love you already now decide for yourself as you know best whether you need to go in for a drinking bout or not rodya well you see well ah uh, ah uh, damn it but where do you mean to go of course if it's all a secret never mind but i i shall find out the secret and i am sure that it must be some ridiculous nonsense and that you've made it all up anyway you are a capital fellow a capital fellow that was just what i wanted to add only you interrupted that that was a very good decision of yours not to find out these secrets leave it to time don't worry about it you'll know it all in time when it must be yesterday a man said to me that what a man needs is fresh air fresh air fresh air i mean to go to him directly to find out what he meant by that razumihin stood lost in thought and excitement making a silent conclusion he's a political conspirator he must be and he's on the eve of some desperate step that's certain it can only be that and and dunya knows he thought suddenly so avdotya romanovna comes to see you he said weighing each syllable and you're going to see a man who says we need more air and so of course that letter that too must have something to do with it he concluded to himself what letter she got a letter to-day it upset her very much very much indeed too much so i began speaking of you she begged me not to then then she said that perhaps we should very soon have to part then she began warmly thanking me for something then she went to her room and locked herself in she got a letter raskolnikov asked thoughtfully yes and you didn't know hm they were both silent good-bye rodion there was a time brother when i N never mind good-bye you see there was a time well good-bye i must be off too i'm not going to drink there's no need now that's all stuff he hurried out but when he had almost closed the door behind him he suddenly opened it again and said looking away oh by the way do you remember that murder you know porphyry's that old woman do you know the murderer has been found he has confessed and given the proofs it's one of those very workmen the painter only fancy do you remember i defended them here would you believe it 
all that scene of fighting and laughing with his companions on the stairs while the porter and the two witnesses were going up he got up on purpose to disarm suspicion the cunning the presence of mind of the young dog one can hardly credit it but it's his own explanation he has confessed it all and what a fool i was about it well he's simply a genius of hypocrisy and resourcefulness in disarming the suspicions of the lawyers so there's nothing much to wonder at i suppose of course people like that are always possible and the fact that he couldn't keep up the character but confessed makes him easier to believe in but what a fool i was i was frantic on their side tell me please from whom did you hear that and why does it interest you so raskolnikov asked with unmistakable agitation what next you ask me why it interests me well i heard it from porfiry among others it was from him i heard almost all about it from porfiry from porfiry what what did he say raskolnikov asked in dismay he gave me a capital explanation of it psychologically after his fashion he explained it explained it himself yes yes good-bye i'll tell you all about it another time but now i'm busy there was a time when i fancied ah, but no matter another time what need is there for me to drink now you have made me drunk without wine i am drunk rodya good-bye i'm going i'll come again very soon he went out he's a political conspirator there's not a doubt about it razumihin decided as he slowly descended the stairs and he's drawn his sister in that's quite quite in keeping with avdotya romanovna's character there are interviews between them she hinted at it too so many of her words and hints bear that meaning and how else can all this tangle be explained hm and i was almost thinking good heavens what i thought yes i took leave of my senses and i wronged him it was his doing under the lamp in the corridor that day foo what a crude nasty vile idea on my part nikolai is a brick for confessing and how clear it all is now his illness then all his strange actions before this in the university how morose he used to be how gloomy but what's the meaning now of that letter there's something in that too perhaps whom was it from i suspect no i must find out he thought of dunya realizing all he had heard and his heart throbbed and he suddenly broke into a run as soon as razumihin went out raskolnikov got up turned to the window walked into one corner and then into another as though forgetting the smallness of his room and sat down again on the sofa he felt so to speak renewed again the struggle so a means of escape had come yes a means of escape had come it had been too stifling too cramping the burden had been too agonizing a lethargy had come upon him at times from the moment of the scene with nikolai at porfiry's he had been suffocating penned in without hope of escape after nikolai's confession on that very day had come the scene with sonya his behaviour and his last words had been utterly unlike anything he could have imagined beforehand he had grown feebler instantly and fundamentally and he had agreed at the time with sonya he had agreed in his heart he could not go on living alone with such a thing on his mind and svidrigailov was a riddle he worried him that was true but somehow not on the same point he might still have a struggle to come with svidrigailov svidrigailov too might be a means of escape but porfiry was a different matter and so porfiry himself had explained it to razumihin had explained it psychologically he had begun bringing in his damned psychology again porfiry but to think that porfiry should for one moment believe that nikolai was guilty after what had passed between them before nikolai's appearance after that tete-a-tete -tete interview which could have only one explanation during those days raskolnikov had often recalled passages in that scene with porfiry he could not bear to let his mind rest on it such words such gestures had passed between them they had exchanged such glances things had been said in such a tone and had reached such a pass that nikolai whom porfiry had seen through at first word at the first gesture could not have shaken his conviction and to think that even razumihin had begun to suspect the scene in the corridor under the lamp had produced its effect then he had rushed to porfiry but what had induced the latter to receive him like that what had been his object in putting razumihin off with nikolai he must have some plan there was some design but what was it it was true that a long time had passed since that morning too long a time and no sight nor sound of porfiry well that was a bad sign 
raskolnikov took his cap and went out of the room still pondering it was the first time for a long while that he had felt clear in his mind at least i must settle svidrigailov he thought and as soon as possible he too seems to be waiting for me to come to him of my own accord and at that moment there was such a rush of hate in his weary heart that he might have killed either of those two porfiry or svidrigailov at least he felt that he would be capable of doing it later if not now we shall see we shall see he repeated to himself but no sooner had he opened the door than he stumbled upon porfiry himself in the passage he was coming in to see him raskolnikov was dumbfounded for a minute but only for one minute strange to say he was not very much astonished at seeing porfiry and scarcely afraid of him he was simply startled but was quickly instantly on his guard perhaps this will mean the end but how could porfiry have approached so quietly like a cat so that he had heard nothing could he have been listening at the door you didn't expect a visitor rodion romanovitch porfiry explained laughing i've been meaning to look in a long time i was passing by and thought why not go in for five minutes are you going out i won't keep you long just let me have one cigarette sit down porfiry petrovitch sit down raskolnikov gave his visitor a seat with so pleased and friendly an expression that he would have marvelled at himself if he could have seen it the last moment had come the last drops had to be drained so a man will sometimes go through half an hour of mortal terror with a brigand yet when the knife is at his throat at last he feels no fear raskolnikov seated himself directly facing porfiry and looked at him without flinching porfiry screwed up his eyes and began lighting a cigarette speak speak seemed as though it would burst from raskolnikov's heart come why don't you speak end of part six chapter one recording by expatriate in bangor maine